So let's get into some streetwear and clothing news, right? Number one news to talk about is Rav Simmons and Prada have joined forces. Now, um, I'm going to be a bit contrarian in this because I'm not really as excited as everyone else is. I think there's been rumours for a long time that Raph has been consulting on Prada for a while. Um, I think maybe since maybe a three seasons back or something, there's always been a feeling that if if not if, if there hasn't been a consultation, they maybe do swap notes because you're seeing a bit more of an influence of Musha Prada, on, especially the last collection with the sort of like weird pouches in the front and the sort of PVCs wrap things around. And the kind of proportions and some of the cuts of the stuff like it does feel a little bit like there's a bit of Misha Prada sprinkling in there so maybe there's like a two-way relationship where they kind of you know as peers and as people who respect each other quite highly they've been featured in magazines together they look like they do speak often um there's probably a bit of a kinship there maybe a, you know whatever it may be from the fact that they're really talented or the fact that they're the last of the dying breeds of like really stellar hyper talented designer designers right who are respected by both consumers and people within the industry which is very rare nowadays especially with how people are so cynical and shit um so maybe this collaboration was on the cards anyway but i got the feeling that raf was going to maybe concentrate more on his own brand ever since the kind of you know the calvin klein implosion i think on paper calvin klein looked like a really good fit for him a place for him to kind of impose his um or to kind of you know give uh to stamp his sort of like um design aesthetic on a house on the brand that's sort of struggling for relevancy struggling to kind of recapture the youth market and also an opportunity for him to kind of reinterpret and to kind of review or reinterpret basically uh americana luxury fashion in the way that he sees fit i think that's the best way you kind of get the best way of ref right when he kind of gives you his interpretation of a subculture his interpretation of a scene his interpretation of an era and kind of you know puts it out there with a sort of rap sprinkling and i thought after the whole calvin klein shit you know the tussle with the with the with the higher ups the stuff that happened at dior that he'd kind of just concentrate on doing his own brand because i think if if as rick owens has probably proved right with his kind of uh, hesitancy or his reluctance to like sign back on again with adidas and the fact that he went in another direction with veja with that kind of vegan brand that he's kind of um, collaborating with now with the V on the end of it and doing a lot of stuff in-house. Sometimes signing some of the your rights away or giving or allowing other people to come into a room and decide other things can sometimes dilute your message. And it also be a, a super annoying if you're like a, I mean, you know, a really headstrong zebra forward charging creative like a Raph Simmons, like a Rick Owens, right? There's only so many notes you can take from executives or marketing assistants who just want to kind of get their two cents in. So I would have thought Raph would just contrary to Raph Simmons and I guess the fact that we've seen some really strong collections from him since he left Calvin made me think that the more time he has to concentrate on his own brand that he will get much better uh, output for us as customers, right? Even the footwear that's come out re- recently has been really good. But I also have the impression that Raph Simmons really likes having a job. He really likes being employed. He really likes working for somebody and going to office. And I think maybe it might be the fact that he's kind of from like an old era where designers didn't necessarily have that luxury of having their own brand, the whole idea. Because you look, you hear that sentiment a lot when you watch a show studio with like the panelists are mostly students. You do get the impression that they even nowadays with the DTC brands, I mean, direct to consumer brands and people putting stuff up on Shopify and have their own kind of online store that they sell their wares on and sell stuff through Instagram. You do get the feeling that nowadays the conversation has changed where like you can sell stuff directly to your customers without having to go through the fashion week cycle, the fashion week calendars, the showroom calendar, um, whoring your stuff around to shops and stuff. You can just find your tribe and sell directly to them right again and again and again and usually that's the best way to kind of you know again to kind of uh do your best work without having the voices of buyers coming in and telling you to change the trim on that jacket because the cut that color is not in or that cut's not in or that application is not in um but i do get a feeling that maybe raf is a, a generation a, a, a generation she's from a generation that prides that takes a lot of pride in the fact that they have a job or that they have like a letter-headed bit of paper or a business card that shows because it's a sort of like a stamp that the industry still thinks you're a good designer i don't know there's something in that like i look at nicholas if i can guess gear the same way too does he really need to work for louis vuitton does he really need to do that couldn't he not especially with the name that he has and how he's known for you know uh he's like his futuristic take on fashion and materials he uses and application and the fact that he cuts like a genius does he really need to do that at louis vuitton could he not do something similar at a lower level, of course, not with the Louis Vuitton um, resources or production, 
but he could do something similar at his own level and i think raf could do the same thing too but it seems like he just wants to do it but anyway the raf might not be a good example because he maybe he has a once a lot of opportunity of working with one of his high, biggest mentors in Lucia prada that he couldn't turn down but i'm not too sure i'm sold on the idea of two designers designing under one house especially two um alpha designers not really not respect like who takes the lead who doesn't take the lead I don't, i'm not really sure if that's going to work out but the announcement happened recently they announced it and everyone in special land went goo goo gaga um i'm just a bit like i'm, I'm waiting to see what actually happens because i'm not too sure how this is actually going to work because so far we've seen that raf has been unable to kind of work within the constraints of big houses um but maybe again working with somebody that he deems to be a mentor somebody who deems to be a peer someone he respects we might see the best version of raf there so it's an article for business of fashion i'm going to pull up here um this is the following Raf Simmons is joining Prada. What does it mean for the Italian mega brand? So this article from Business Fashion, written by Chantel Fernandez, uh, Tamminson O'Connor, and Vikram Alexi Kansara. It says the following. After months of speculation, Raf Simmons is joining the House of Prada. Oh yeah, there's speculation too. There was a rumor out there. I remember, I think Brian, Brian Boy might have been the one that started it. I'm not sure if he was being sinister, but he did suggest something along the lines of maybe uh, Raf Simmons was going to Givenchy, which would have been fucking insane, considering... But I think some of the best work we've seen at Givenchy has been from Ricardo Tissue, who had a very de um, distinct idea of male masculinity, right? This kind of rugged, beefier dude. And the fact that Raf Simmons' idea of masculinity is very ephemeral, is very effervescent, is very like wafty, very slim, very young, um, clean shaven. Uh, do you know what I mean? That would have been a very cool contrast to see how they both interpreted Givenchy codes. Um, using different kind of um, avatars or different kind of ideas of male masculinity. I would have liked to have seen that, but again, it's not happening. So um, the cerebral Belgian designer who was previously designed for Jill Sander, Christian Jill and Calvin Klein will take up. So again, he does love having a job. Those are four big jobs he's had in the past. And all throughout that time, I think you, you could probably argue his best work has come from Raph Simmons. The ones that, the things that he's actually known for or that he's iconic for, or people that I actually remember, like, oh yeah, shit, that's an actually crazy thing, has been Raph. I think of the massive Parker. I think of the uh, I think of the I think of the old the patchwork um, camo MA one. I think of the jeans. I think of the trainers. I think of the hoodies. It's all been from Raph Simmons like own label. It's not been from Jill Sander, Christian Dior, or Calvin Klein. There's obviously the Calvin Klein. You've had some really great boots that have come out from that people are really obsessed about. But I can't think of anything from Dior that I've I've, I've seen people like fiending over. Maybe some jeans and shit. But most of the stuff's been from his own collection. So again. Maybe he just loves having a job. Um, the cerebral bone designer will take up the role of co-creative director, which you know, I've not really heard before. Working alongside Musha Prada with equal responsibilities to creative direction, decision making, and unconventional configuration. The appointment is effective on April the second, twenty twenty. The first show as a co-creator director will come in spring summer twenty twenty one. Men's women's wear presented in Milan. Now the cool thing about this is that Musha Prada has always done like co-ed shows or like shows that have been mixed gendered or like kind of um, gender neutral shows where. They, not generation shows more so she always mixes the men's and the women's or women's and the men's in the same show so there is so that will be quite cool and there's always a continuity there's always a kind of theme that ties them together um it's never something you know sometimes people will stick a male model in a women's fashion show and just kind of pop it just kind of stick out like a sore thumb whereas I've, it feels like with Misha Prada it's always seamless it always tells a story there's always like a relationship between both people um they they, they kind of live within the same world so that's pretty there's not like a merely an observer standing on the sidelines so that might work really well uh, Simmons, who continue to design his namesake menswear label, is the first major talent um, uh, from outside of Prada family to join the house since its inception. Wow. In 1978, Misha Prada inherited the label as a luggage maker and transformed it into the global fashion brand with her creative designs, beginning with the launch of the company's first successful handbag design. The, uh, the rendered in Black Nylon 1985, the ready to wear offered offering launched in 1989. Since Simmons abruptly exited uh, Calvin Klein, where he was chief creative director, chief creative officer, sorry, in December 2018, he was focused on his menswear line, but rumors of his possible involvement in Prada picked up steam in recent months. Prada is a brand that I have been interested in my whole life. I cannot wait to express all you, um, I'll express to all of you the dialogue I will have with Mrs. Prada and her team, Simmons said in a secretive conference for select press held at the company's headquarters to announce the news, which is interesting, isn't it? A closed door press conference. Um, to do it, fashion is always. Fashion is the last place where it's still quite uppity. It's still quite snotty about things, right? Art is this art. You can just go on newexhibitions.com, I think, and find private views of some of the best exhibitions happening in the world or happening in London or in the UK and go to them, attend them and rub shoulders and elbows with some of the biggest high flyers in the industry. But fashion is still the only scene where it's quite hard to find out when the next fashion show is happening. It's quite hard to get in the room, right? But 
all the pictures, everything that happens, everything that happens within that room is available on the internet instantly. But actually getting it physically is very difficult. It doesn't make any sense really that, isn't it? It's like the opposite of Bergheim. Like there's no pictures of the inside. You don't know what's happening until you get in there. And to get in there is really difficult, right? You just have to go. It's one of those kind of things. But fashion is like they stop you from going in. But then instantly, if just standing outside, you can see everything. You'll probably live stream it off your phone. Um, it's the last real kind of place where people are really kind of... Uh, there's a the last place where there's actual gatekeepers, it seems like, for the most part. Um, Simon said in a secretive conference for Select Press, two days after uh, Prada's last show, last show for the brand. To be really honest, Mr. Bertelli approached me right after my exit from Calvin Klein, Simmons continued. Misha and I had a conversation about creativity in today's fashion system, and it brought me to open dialogue with many designers, not just Prada. We have to re we look at how creativity can evolve in today's fashion system, of course. And this might be a, a reaction to the stuff. Remember when um, Raf said some really disparaging stuff about Virgil? This might be part of the re uh, relationship that they probably have this f f uh, WhatsApp group where they kind of hate on everyone, right? Because you hear comedians say that often. Like Comedians say like their WhatsApp group or their kind of message threads that they have with people in the industry are mostly predicated on the, on the fact that they kind of you know rinse people in the industry who they think aren't deserving of their fame, but then in public they'll never say it, which I think is quite cool. I think there is a level of there is a level of honesty and humility behind the idea that, you know, they can be honest enough to say, look, we are hating behind the scenes, but we don't, we never let it affect the person's pocket. We're not going to be saying stuff to agents and booking managers not getting shows. But amongst our peers, we will say to ourselves, oh, that's shit, that's bad. But outwardly, if someone asks us about a fellow comedian, we protect our own and say, no, it's not for me or it's not something I've listened to lately, but I'm going to support him because he's a comedian like me and he's going through the same trials and tribulation, right? I, li I like that idea. So maybe this is kind of stemmed from that group chat. They've had a group chat where they've kind of shitted on everyone. Oh, how the fuck has Virgil got that job? Blah, 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 blah. And then instead of complaining about it in general, they've made a, a solution or a, uh, an alternative. And I think that's the best thing to do with fashion. I think that's the best thing to do nowadays in fashion because there's going to be, I think we're going to see a lot more of these kind of Virgil people pop up where they kind of rise up from nowhere and they kind of have unconventional backgrounds and they're not classically trained. We're going to see a lot more of them. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think the thing that fashion needs more so, we need more of the Virgil types and we also need more of the kind of conventional, I went to fashion design school, but I've also got my own brand. We don't want the kids leaving university and being so desperate to kind of work for fucking, you know, um, Alexander McQueen and just kind of giving all their best years as I'm a queen and having nothing to give after they finished it. We want those kids who've got the ability to go to fashion school, to get accepted, uh, to go through that whole rigmarole of four to five years, however long it is to get a degree, um, get a master's and leave and become very proficient at making clothes. We also want to see them make their own brand so, they, they, so that they can offer an alternative to what somebody like a Virgil is doing. The problem is that when you have only the kind of Virgil people out there who are kind of the creative director of a brand and they have people, other people doing most of the stuff for them and don't have maybe a conventional fashion background, is that it then dilutes what the capital of fashion is. I'm sure Virgil will admit that too. He needs the kind of conventional fashion designers too to kind of bounce off of and to work from and to kind of react off of and they need him too. So maybe this is going to be part of the process. So it continued here. Uh, da, da, da. Simmons is one of the most influential designers in the industry, already has a relationship with the Prada Group. Mushia and per Patricia Bertelli hired Simmons as creative director for Jill Sun in 2005, which makes sense, and they controlled the brand and were looking for somebody to fill the shoes of a nascent designer. Simmons' seven-year tenure at the brand was critical and commercial success, and the Prada Group sold it to a London private antiquity firm in 2006. We've known Raph's for a very long time. Back in 2005, when I first went to meet him in Antwerp, said Bertelli. Besides being an engaged in fashion, it's, just, it's not just a professional relationship it's a human relationship we share which is awesome and that's the best collaborations not so just you know because oh we got two we got a brand you got a brand you talk to kids i talk to kids let's join them together and make loads of money it's it's great when there's actually a mutual love relationship between them because you get far more interesting propositions you get a better process uh the clothes are more interesting there's there, there is an idea that they're just doing it for the sake of doing it like they both don't need the money right even though i say Raph Simon loves having a job i'm sure he's financially well set I'm sure uh, Misha Prada is very well, well set too. It's just an exercise in creativity, right? They're both very talented. They're both very capable and they're just bored. They want something to kind of, you know, give them that kind of spike and give them that kind of jolt back in the arse again. And this probably is probably a great way to do it. Um, Simmons has described Mutual Prada as a true pioneer in fashion and acknowledged her influence on his work. On all levels, I can see Mutual's clear vision. 
um, her mindset, her view on the world and her view on art and her political opinions, said Simmons in a 2016 interview with Prada and Sister Magazine, which I talked about earlier. And as one person, she's able to construct and share that on such a huge scale. I find that mind blowing. Prada returned the reputation in the same interview. Sometimes I think I've had a fantastic idea. And Olivier, who works with me and Fabio on the shows, knows Raph's work so well, says to me, Musha, Raph already did that before. Uh, the two had a deep shared appreciation for contemporary art. Simmons, a long time right hand, uh, Peter Moyler or Pieter Moyler uh, will not accompany the designer in his new position. Moyler posted congratulations on Instagram, adding good luck with the next big, next big step. Strange to be not be by his side and he'll be our biggest fan. As for whether Simmons' appointment amounts to a retirement plan for Mutual Prada, the designer said in a chuckle, absolutely not. I like working and I'm very excited. This will bring new, new wind. Please don't make me older than I am. Uh, but asked about the length of the contract the Simmons, Prada signaled that it could theoretically last for life. It furious forever. Indeed, the arrival of Simmons and the perpetual nature of his contract sets up a possibility of a smooth passing in a creative torch sometimes uh, sometime down the road, a seemingly smart move to secure the future of the brand, which is very true. And also an indication that as annoying as fashion is to get in, right? I think everyone that's worked in fashion knows that loads of the kind of middle pe the people that work on the middle level right the mid-level managers they're sort of like the worst gatekeepers usually the people at the top the main designers don't give a shit and they'll give an opportunity if they have one but the ones on the middle level or some 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 of the entry level too because it's so hard to get in there's a lot of poverty scarcity mindset everyone thinking that the opportunities are very scarce which they are because no one leaves those kind of jobs but fashion is also a good opportunity because it shows that if you're talent you have the ability you also have the opportunity to have a job for life. Like someone will, will allow you to, uh, the arts are the same too, right? You get patrons and you get people that kind of support you and just kind of fund your life so you can kind of create art and not do anything else. And I think fashion is the same way. If they see your talent, they see you've got the ability, they will make sure you're in a you're in a position where all you have to do is focus on fashion and nothing else. And that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's the whole kind of article. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but yeah, uh, Raf is joined Prada. Congratulations to him. Hopefully we see some cool interesting things from both of them in the near future.